What is going on guys? It's Toby here and today we're going to be diagnosing a code from the ECU that tells me that I'm running too rich and too lean at the same time. So Cody here is going to help me out. Basically what happened was we were taking pictures with Cody yesterday and we were just idling the car and I got that weird check engine light. So I plugged it in, ran all the codes and it says that I'm running both rich and lean in bank number one. It's kind of strange because usually you don't run both lean and rich in the same bank but you can see the codes right here. So P2 BEC PL172. So we're going to check out what we can do here. And before I check out anything mechanically, such as my injectors, maybe the fuel pump and anything fuel related, I'm just going to see if flashing a new tune will help. I mean, that was the tuner's advice. So he did send me a new file here. So I think I need to download this and then put it on the HP tuners profile. As you guys can see, I have never used this program before. I've only used it for pretty much making logs. So that's a completely different program. So we're going to check this out and hopefully it goes all right. So I'm going to put on basic because I have no idea what I'm doing and hopefully I can flash this tune. As I said earlier, I have no clue what I'm doing. So I'm consulting YouTube and the internet professionals to see how I flash this tune back to my car. So this forum came in clutch. It's actually from Lun Racing. And what they say you need to do is download the RTD flasher program, open it up, and then basically connect to the car. So it should be pretty straightforward. Once the flash procedure is complete, it'll prompt you to cycle the key. We usually wait 10 seconds before cycling the key back on so i think we're set to go we're gonna give this a shot might be a little bit sketchy though yeah my mom actually dropped that in the airport so the laptop's all banged up like it fell maybe like four feet and it just got completely destroyed but we're gonna go and head to sally right now here she is boys all parked up next to the scat pack and bozo 50 where's bozo 50 oh behind this is also somewhat of a tutorial as to what you should do if you get a similar code so i'll put that in the title or something but i guess it varies with your car and we still have to check for any mechanical issues cars are those but you know what happened this morning someone poured their freaking starbucks all over Sally. I'll show you guys in just a second. We got to zoom in. I don't know who did this, but it was super messed up. So you can see it all over the vinyl, like it's splattered everywhere. And then if you come over to the fender, it's all over there, the hood, it's like baked in there, all that sugar. Once again, I wish I knew who did that because I would go after them, possibly make them pay for a detailing because that's absolutely ridiculous. Like who does that? Do you need a Wi-Fi connection for this. So I guess we'll just use a hotspot or something. Okay. But we got to get Sally open. In regards to the remote tuning device, if you are tuned by Palm Beach Dino, they like to use this RTD. Now Lun uses it too. It's basically this right here, which goes into your OBD port. And then you should have the tune that they gave you originally on a flash drive. So mine is in there. The remote tuning device actually goes straight into the OBD port. Now I need to to pull out my steering wheel one so out comes the steering wheel one and then you just plug it into the port right here so essentially it should just click in like that and you're set to go now you can plug in the cable the usb cable and get it connected to your computer i also need to get my hotspot going to make sure that we can basically connect to the servers so there it goes it's on now quick intermission we do have to walk sophia's dogs because they haven't been out in a while so we got to go pick up puppy and weenie i've shown them in a previous vlog before so we got to go get them yeah i come running out <laughs> Here they come. What's up? <laughs> Puppy is definitely ready for his walk. Go, boy. Go, go, go. Go. Puppy, we gotta go work on the car, man. So hurry up, hurry up. She just forgot a poop bag, and Weenie took the biggest poop in front of everybody. So it was embarrassing. Now I'm running to get one. But yeah, as I was saying earlier, someone went absolutely insane with pouring something on my car. It was most likely like Starbucks, but you can really see it here. So you can see where it's dried out and it's really hard and sugary. So it's definitely milk or coffee or something like that. In order to read the vehicle and add a new tune, you need to turn on the accessory power. So they say not to turn on your engine specifically. And then from there, you're gonna go flash read vehicle. So you can see that the remote tuning device read the vehicle and identified it as a 2020 Ford Mustang GT. Flashing, you do also have to gather your VCM suite info. So I just clicked that I right there and it pulled up all my stats. So you also do want to save your suite info. So we're going to use this to save it to the desktop. This is just in case that tune doesn't work out too well and you have your previous one that they put on. So I'm going to name it like something previous and then save it to my desktop. Now that's saved. So now we have to go file open to open up the tuning file. And I think I put it right here. So we're just going to crack that right open so now that we have our file open you can see it on the top whipple 93 1050x we're going to write the vehicle and uh write calibration i'm pretty sure you're supposed to write right entire so you're supposed to select right entire and then you write it 
Now the car is going bad crazy, so it turned off everything, it flashed all the warning lights, and it's writing everything. So we're about 58, 60% done now. We only have two minutes left, it's still writing files, and then it should be good to go. So I think we're supposed to cycle the ignition on and off after we do this. So now I have to turn my ignition off, wait one, two, three, turn ignition on, and then click OK. So we should be able to start the car now, it should be good to go. <laughs> data log it's called VCM scanner and if I get any check engine lights like I did last time I'll just run a diagnostic on it okay, guys so while Toby's in there tuning his car I'm gonna show you guys how to do a Cody cold start so basically you just want to get in the vehicle get the car put in neutral clutch all the way down foot like 75% down on the gas and start the car make sure you don't really have to worry about warming it up it does it automatically now we're just going to do a little drive to make sure that the code doesn't pop back up. I'm also going to do some data logging and send it to, over to Rob from Palm Beach Dino to make sure that everything is running correctly. I think we should be good now, but there's no confirming it until we drive it. This is how we road test. Okay, so no check it in there. We're also going to do some downshifts through the tunnel to see, I mean... Because the first time that it flicked on, it wasn't from aggressive driving. It flicked on literally when I was idling, and then it flicked on when Cody, when I asked him to move my car. So we'll see. I have hit it in second one more time for the video. So. <laughs> All those verbals, but I think we're good. Honestly, it wouldn't help. We're on our way back now, but if in the event that it does show up again, I'm probably just gonna do the fuel hat and see if it fixes it. I really wanna do a data log, but I need like user codes and that type of stuff to make sure that it runs correctly, because right now it's not running at all. It's like complicated. Is that Bozo 5.0? Bozo 5.0. Am I about to back into Bozo 5.0? <laughs> <laughs> give me a check. <laughs> Looks like writing that new tune to the car may have fixed the problem, but I'm gonna drive around and drive throughout the day and we'll see if it comes back on. So this is like a temporary solution for now. I have a feeling that it might come back on and I might need to replace the Bozo pump with that new fuel hat that I have in the trunk. Don't mind the auto zone in my trunk, but this is the new fuel hat that I'm talking about. So that's a DW400 pump, and this should help me get to 760 wheel on 93 pump gas, but I'm not really gonna do that. So this should be a better alternative to the Bozo pump. What happens, I guess? Ooh. <laughs> he actually has to dip out now, so he's going back to the See ya. Also actually driving from Orlando to Gainesville so it's like a two and a half hour ride and this will determine whether or not that was a temporary fix or a long-term solution so we'll see. I still have the Pilot Sport 4S's on because it's been raining way too much in Florida and I'm not risking it with the bead locks on the turnpike going 70 plus miles an hour. I'm officially on the road again now once I get to Gainesville I actually reconsidered my decisions. I'm gonna put that fuel hat in so you all can get a tutorial as to how you can do that yourself but I want to pull up next to Sophia because her car looks really cool with the sunset going on. Yeah. This vlog is a little bit all over the place, but on the way to Gainesville, we decided to stop at Disney Springs, kind of like our last little hurrah before going there. We actually went to Hollywood Studios with the boys like literally yesterday, but I forgot the vlog camera because I woke up at like 8 a.m. and I was like, there's no way. Like I was barely even awake and I wasn't awake for like the first two hours in the park. And then I finally woke up after I went on like the rocket roller coaster. I don't know, that thing pulls like five Gs and then I really woke up. So I totally forgot the camera. Hey, yeah, rev it. Give us a rev. I don't know if she will. I don't think she hears me. Her car looks so good though. Honestly, <laughs> I've said this before. I need to get a Challenger, like a Hellcat wide body Challenger. Sophia's car was crackling and popping like crazy in this garage. She was causing havoc in the Disney Springs garage. Sophia wants a warm start of the Challenger in here, so she's gonna do it. Remote start. <laughs> it sounds good. It's crackling so much in here. I said it on the video. I'm freezing out here. Sophia is too. It's pretty cold, but we're just gonna keep walking around, <laughs> looking at the stores and stuff, and then we'll be on the way to Gainesville. Uh -huh. 
So random fun fact, this is the only restaurant that I ever remember from when I went here when I was younger because my dad used to take me there like every single time. Like it's the only place he would let us eat. There's another cool thing about downtown Disney or Disney Springs as they call it now. So they have these massive hot air balloons and you can actually arrange a reservation to go on them. This walk is actually really cool. So you can walk around the lake. Well, you're actually not supposed to. Sophia convinced me to sneak out of the gates, but we're walking around this and then we're getting something to eat and we're out of here, I think. Honestly, I feel like we should eat here Sophia, like T-Rex, that seems pretty cool. What do you think? <laughs> Never mind, I found a new spot to go. So we're going to the Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> Not even gonna lie, this was my favorite place to eat when I was little. So my mom would take me here. And I mean, obviously not at Disney Springs because this is new, but the Rainforest Cafe was a big hit. Uh, can I get the Alfredo? Alfredo? Yep. And then shredded mozzarella bit? Yes, please. It's super cold. I'm definitely gonna have to put on my warmer, but we're gonna bounce out of here now. We'll probably get on our way. Listen to how sick your car sounds in the parking lot. Now, I know it might be a little loud, but it crackles and pops like crazy, like I was explaining earlier. I think it's only on diesel though. Let's see. So fun fact, this is exactly where I had the accident about, I don't even know, six months ago in July. You can still see where the bushes are pushed in and all that type of stuff. So it's always creepy driving by there, but I do need to merge out of here. And Rob from Palmy Shino sent me the new OS code so I can run a data log and make sure everything is running right. This right here is exactly what I'm talking about. You have to input that specific OS code into VCM suite and that allows you to run a log. I actually ended up staying one more night in Orlando. So now I actually have to get the class. I think I'm about to be late. I don't know. I'm like two hours away and it's like 11 and my class starts at like one. So I need to hurry up. What's up puppy? Good morning. Unfortunately, I can't take you guys with me. So come on, weenie. Step away. Step away, boy. Come on. My coffee is still all over my car because I didn't get a proper chance to clean it off. And I figured if I put water on it, I just reactivate whatever was going on with like the coffee. So I do need to get a full wash and after class, I'll go wash it off. I don't know who told that person that was okay to do that. Like just imagine if I did that to you, like, I don't know, that's like completely inconsiderate and I would never find myself doing something like that. One thing I've noticed while being in the cold weather, because usually I'm in West Palm Beach, so it's like 80 degrees and above, but the MT-82 is getting really hard to shift. Like it's kind of reluctant to go into gear in this cold weather, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's just me, but it almost feels as if it's hard to get into certain gears. Like it'll just be like, no, no. And like getting into first and reverse is probably the most difficult when it's cold. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. It's like reluctant to go into gear and then people behind me get really mad because I'm taking forever to go. But like every other gear is okay for the most part. First and reverse is the worst. Just getting on the highway on ramp right now, so it's this big curve, but like I was saying in an earlier vlog, like the one where I was moving back to Gainesville, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S handles so much better. Like it's not even funny. There's no comparable difference between having the beat locks in a turn. And I mean, that's pretty obvious, but I just forgot and took it for granted for how much better handling they are. And here we go on another turn. <laughs> this is the best part about driving on the highway, honestly, as long as it's not raining. I have slightly messed up a little bit, so I went through one of those windshield wiper things and I got the whole front of the car wet on purpose to see if diluting it down would help, but it actually did the opposite. So I reactivated whatever was poured on there, the Starbucks drink, and now it's going all over my windshield and it's super sticky. So even if I like try and use the wiper, it doesn't go away. So you can see how sticky that crap is. I guess this is part two of seeing if this is gonna do anything. So hopefully it knocks it off. I can see streaking of the Starbucks drink all over the hood. So it really did reactivate now I'm wondering if I just like sit here for like five minutes if it's just gonna fix it completely and get it all off We'll see though. Honestly, this is my favorite part about going to class So you can see there's a very scenic route along the way So we have these overhanging trees and then we approach campus and then I'm pretty much there But I think I'm gonna park at Chipotle today because I'm running kind of late class starts in five minutes And I'm not gonna park on campus. It's a pain in the butt on the way to class I spotted that wide body scat. It looks really good actually and those are going for crazy prices right now with the whole COVID uh, price is going on. So that car is probably worth like a good 60K as much as a Hellcat with the wide body. I'm like five minutes late right now. So it's really not that big of a deal, but I need to run to class. So I'll catch you guys once I get in there. 
Never mind, it looks like I won't be going to class today. The professor just emailed me and said it was canceled. So usually my class would literally be right there on the first floor. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine over. So it's the ninth window and that's where I would be, but obviously it's canceled. No class means I'm going straight to Chipotle and the car wash to get the stuff off of my car. Now I may do the fuel head, I don't know. Maybe I'll leave that for a later vlog because like there's too much going on in this one. Maybe I'll do that with the new BMR suspension that I have. So right there is a BMR box and those are vertical links. So those guys right there go to UF and they actually follow me. So they pulled up next to me and wanted to talk to me. Hold up, I got a shift real quick. But yeah, that's an XK and it's supercharged. It's making like 700 to the wheels. They're super I'm putting you guys in the box. had a literal feast at Chipotle but this is the car wash that I go to while I'm in Gainesville at school because obviously I don't have a pressure washer or anything like that so this is super easy and convenient they actually have a foam cannon here it's super simple and self-explanatory you just pull in here and you have the foam cannon right there you also have a pressure washer you have a dryer you also have some shade so this ensures that you don't get any water spots from the Sun it's gonna give Sally here a quick wash now obviously I'm not gonna be using the brush because that's super destructive towards your paint so never use that I'm telling you guys this place is super convenient if you have one in your city I highly recommend it if you don't have a pressure washer at home but I'm gonna start with a high pressure rinse so this is just straight up water with a pressure washer I just hit her with the rinse so now I'm gonna go ahead and select the triple shine which is actually the foam cannon here so pardon the bad angle because I'm trying to record and do this at the same time and I only have two hands but this is what the foam cannon looks like and you just go around top to bottom pretty much. I mean I didn't really go top to bottom but whatever I'll fix that later on when I do more of the foam and I'm just going around and shooting everything all over the car. So I know the lighting might not be the best but I'm trying here with this bad angle. I'm just trying to make sure that all of that coffee gets off of my car and it doesn't stain up the clear coat and ruin the paint. So slowly getting around to the bumper now. After you shoot the car with foam, you actually want to let the soap sit on it for about 30 seconds to a minute. It allows all the suds to basically bring all the dirt off of the surface and then you can shut it off and rinse it with water. I do need to give the car one more rinse. I already shot all of the foam off, but I still had some residual left over. So I'm going to take the high pressure and just spray it off. So for anybody wondering what you need to do after you do the foam cannon, you just take the hose with regular water and you spray it all off. Then you have the option of drying it and we're going to go over that. This specific tool right there is actually a handheld blow dryer. I already used it on Sally and I think I'm going to leave the fuel hat for another video. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. I have no idea why someone thought it was funny to put Starbucks on the hood of my car. It literally didn't achieve anything by doing so. So I'll see you guys in the next one.